Hello everyone and welcome to a really awesome game but the, uh, the game itself comes with some very sad news. Uh, on the 24th of August uh, this year uh, Wolfgang Ullmann died at the age of 85 and we haven't uh, uh, ran into him a lot on this channel but we have uh, ran into him uh, somewhat during the Bobby Fischer saga. We've mentioned that uh, Bobby played against him in the 1970 uh, Palma de Mallorca Interzonal Tournament and even though uh, Fischer was a machine back then he you know obliterated everyone. Uh, Wolfgang Ullmann also did ex extremely well uh, on this event uh, and he qualified for the candidates matches which uh, he lost to, to Bent uh, Larsen uh, later on. Uh, but this was the, the closest that Wolfgang Ullmann got to, to becoming world champion in those days but it was extremely hard as you uh, you can imagine the, the competition back then was, was extremely fierce. And also uh, one thing I wanted you to show is a, a, a photo uh, where uh, Ullmann is playing against Bobby Fischer. Uh, it's not this game that we're going to show. This is actually from the 14th Olymp uh, uh, Chess Olympiad in Leipzig, the final group A. Uh, in the final round, uh, 8th November uh, 1960, it was the top board clash between East Germany and the United States. Here, uh, Ullmann uh, faces young, young Bobby Fischer. Fischer was around 17 years old at the time. Uh, this was also in 1960, and it was uh, one year after the, the Great Candidates Tournament of 1959. And, uh, of course, I don't have to, uh, you know, remind you the, at the final standings of the 1959 Candidates Tournament. Those of you who are older subscribers on the channel uh, most likely know this. Now, uh, why I've chosen this game to show uh, as, uh, as a game... Uh, to, to be remembered. There are a lot of great games from Wolfgang Ullmann, uh, but he was known to be one of the, uh, well, most acknowledged uh, uh, leading experts on, on the French defense, so that's why I chose it. He plays the French defense here against uh, Bobby Fischer, uh, and uh, well, it, it's just a beautiful game. I was uh, drinking coffee in the morning with Yelena and Medo, and a friend of mine uh, sent me uh, a Facebook post by Emil Sotovsky saying uh, how uh, Wolfgang Ullmann died and you know it, it, was, it was a really nice post I will put a link to it in the description below if you want to check it out and he said what would be uh, a nice game to show and I said this will be uh, a nice game to show as he faces uh, well uh, none other than uh, Robert James Fisher with the black pieces playing the French defense and it's quite a game so without further ado uh, let's check it out uh, and see what happens here so the game was played in 1960 in the Buenos Aires tournament uh, and, uh, well, Bobby Fischer with the white pieces opens with e4. Uh, we have e6 by Ullmann, d4 and d5. Sorry about that. Uh, the French defense is on the board. We have knight to c3 and the bishop to b4 going for the uh, for the vinegar variation of the French and e5 by Fischer. And now c5 is the most common move here, but uh, knight to e7 was played. This is the like the second most popular option. We have a3 captures on c3, b captures and c5. So this is now perfectly perfectly fine even for today's standards. Queen g4 usually what what people play here knight to f3 also a possibility h4 h5 uh, now in the days of, of alpha 0 and lila chess 0. Uh, but also a4 uh, one one of the options that is very often played here making room for the bishop uh, on a3 to, to control this diagonal. So we have knight b to c6, adding another uh, attacker to the central squares, and knight f3, Fischer uh, continues development. And here bishop to, to d7, uh, here queen to a5 uh, is the, the most uh, often played move here. Bishop to d7, and now queen to d2 by Fischer, a very rare move. Uh, and here comes queen to a5, and now it is as of move 9 that this position uh, was never reached again. So Fischer continues development, we have bishop to d3, uh, and now c4, usually not to be encouraged to this pawn, uh, pawn push as it is a very, very uh, anti-positional and now it's, uh, well, basically just white that can play on the, on the king side, but sometimes uh, this, is, this is a good idea. We have bishop back to e2 by Fischer and now Ullmann goes for f6. So he closed up the center and now he wants to attack it with f6 and undermine the, the advanced e5 pawn. Bishop to a3, Fischer gains control of this diagonal, uh, hence the move a4, and now knight to g6, remaneuvering the knight, putting more pressure on the e5 square. Fischer castles kingside, and here Ullmann castles queenside. And now we have castles on opposite sides of the board, and, uh, well, uh, well, we'll see who's faster here. Fischer immediately goes for bishop to d6, doesn't allow king to b8 to be played. Uh, and here the, the black king is very vulnerable. Uh, we have knight c to e7 by Ullmann. Uh, and uh, now what do you do here? Here is the moment of 
uh, that uh, you really need to be careful how to how to go about the position with white. So best for Fisher is rook f to b1. Next, uh, well, you can just double up here, for example, rook b4 followed by rook a to b1 and put uh, a lot of pressure along this uh, line. Maybe in the future some rook captures and b7 ideas will be possible. All in all, uh, this, this would be the way to go. But here Fisher instead goes for a nice tricky line. He goes for knight to h4. Uh, he wants to get this knight away from the, the defense of the e7 knight so he can capture the knight with bishop captures on e7. The problem with this plan is that after Ullmann's uh, very nice defensive move, rook d to e8, there is not much uh, uh, for Fischer's knight to do there. So in, uh, he doesn't feel like bringing it back, he doesn't feel like trading here, he instead just uh, trades everything off. We have knight captures on g6, h captures on g6, e captures on f6, and the g captures on f6. So now Fisher did some trades here, but all in all, uh, what he achieved is that, uh, well, he just gave black the uh, semi-open h-file. And of course, Ullmann will utilize this by doubling up rooks here uh, on the h-file. While uh, this bishop is no longer so nicely uh, placed here on d6 as there is no pawn on e5 to, to defend it. So h3 by Fisher, and now knight to f5. Uh, with h3, you gain some more... Uh, protection for the king, also get a, get a nice breeding square in, and also make an escape route for the bishop if it's under attack, which it is. We have knight to f5 by Ullmann, and Fisher brings back the bishop. We have bishop to h2. Uh, don't hold it against me. Sometimes I say bishop instead of Fisher. Sometimes I say bishop's Fisher. Sometimes, you know, I, I have no idea why I do this. Uh, and here, g5. So now uh, you want to get the knight away. You want to start pushing here and bust open uh, Fisher's king side. Uh, we have f4 by Fisher with the idea that if pawn captures, you can maybe capture with the queen, put some pressure here. But it's very, very unlikely because Ullmann can just play e5 and he will have this very amazing center here. Captures, captures, for example, the queen has to move the g3 square covered by the knight. And the, once, the, once the queen moves, uh, well, you, you can just bring the other rook into the game and have a, have a very nice attacking game. So here, instead, after f4, we have knight back to d6. Now, by playing f4, Fisher made sure that he no longer will ever have a pawn on f3. So the e4 square uh, is reserved definitely for this knight. We have bishop to f3. Fisher is ready for, for the knight, so he can capture with the bishop. Uh, but now comes a, a very, very nice move. Uh, basically, the only move that gives black the advantage, and the woman plays it. We have g4. And g4 is such a nice move. Uh, because you're inviting the bishop to capture the g4 pawn. But if the bishop captures, then knight e4 comes in with an attack on the queen and on the c3 pawn. And once the queen moves, you can even play f5. Push the bishop back, let's say bishop f3, and now this rook comes over to the g file. And now you can see that this bishop uh, isn't really doing anything. This bishop isn't really doing anything. The rooks are, well, not doing all that much. And it's black who will be attacking this game. Probably you will have to eliminate this knight, but after that you don't really have a good way of activating your h2 bishop. So this is a really, really bad bishop. So here, after g4, Fisher has to do something, but capturing with the bishop, uh, well, we've, we've seen it doesn't do all that much. So h captures on g4 is played, uh, and now f5. Again, gaining complete control of the e4 square, uh, allowing Fisher to create a past g pawn, but now the h file is open for Ullmann's rooks to... To be used. So g5, Fisher create, creates a pass pawn, and now rook e7, preparing rook to h7 to, you know, wreak havoc along the h file. We have bishop to g3, and now bishop to e8 uh, by Ullmann. Uh, we have queen to e3. Now, okay, Fisher has an escape route for his king. He doesn't have to worry. The c3 pawn is nicely defended, but now knight to e4, and that's just a monster knight. You have to eliminate that because the, there will be constant pressure on c3. All of these squares are covered by the knight. So Fisher has to eliminate it. We have bishop captures and the d captures on e4. We have king to f2. Now Fisher uh, gets the king to a safer square. And now rook e to h7. Preparing to, at some point, bring the bring the rooks over to the, uh, to, uh, to, to the h file. We have rook f to b1. Finally, now the, the rooks come into play. But now, uh, at some point, you have to worry about if Ullmann's queen moves, maybe ideas like d5 will be possible, the opening up of the queen's attack to the a7 pawn. So here, queen to d5. A very nice centralizing move by Ullmann. 
and now comes queen to c2. Again, you could play something like rook to g1, just play a waiting move. Fisher could also play a5, a6, try to create some weaknesses there. Uh, but Fisher goes for queen to c1. He wants to bring the queen into the attack. Uh, but the problem is uh, now the, the two rooks no, no longer control the h file. And here we have a most interesting move by Ullmann, rook to h1. And it seems like it's crazy. Why would you give up two rooks for the queen? Uh, and... Uh, it, it just doesn't seem like uh, this should work. However, uh, it uh, it does work, and for a very specific reason. For example, here, Fischer should not give up the, the queen for two rooks. He should play something like queen e3, and then Ullmann would decide whether he wants to keep pushing with trades, or he can just go back and uh, say to Fischer, try to find a, a, a different idea. It's hard to say, uh, but... Uh, if Ullmann would be, would feel comfortable pushing for more here with the black pieces, but I think he would. And uh, here, instead of uh, trying to offer, let's say, a repetition with queen to e3, Fischer decides to give up the queen for two rooks. Uh, but of course, who wouldn't? So rook captures on h1, but not really. Uh, feel free to pause the video here and try to find what Ullmann had in mind while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting uh, the, the greatest uh, Zwischenzug uh, of all. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the, uh, the game, it's uh, E3 with check. A nice deflecting move that opens up uh, this E4 square for Ullmann's queen. So now if you capture the pawn, for example, king captures, you're getting queen E4 check. And now it doesn't matter where the king goes, the game is just over. Uh, for example, if king goes to D2, then it's the very nice uh, rook captures on H1, rook captures on H1, and now queen captures on G2 check, either winning the rook if the king goes to the, to the back rank, uh, or winning the bishop, so it doesn't really matter. And it doesn't help if the king doesn't go to D2. If you go to F2, it's even worse, because now you just trade, captures, captures, uh, and now bishop to C6. And the only way to defend here is to block it with, with either... Uh, the, the g1 square or the h2 square, for example, rook h to g1. Now comes queen captures on c2 check, king e3, you're going to go queen d3 check, king f2, uh, and now queen to d2 check. Now the king has to go down the board, king f1, and now finally bishop to e4, threatening checkmate with bishop to d3, not a lot you can do here, so you can make some room for the king, but now it doesn't help. Check with queen captures on g2, king to e1, and now, of course, queen captures on h1. You grab both of the rooks, and it's just game over. So this is what Ullmann had in mind when he played this. So after e3 check, Fischer declines this. He says, I don't want to allow queen e4 to come with check. So he plays king to g1, but now... Uh, Rook captures will be met by king captures, and the rooks are uh, stuck here. So rook captures on h1, king captures, and now not bishop to c6, threatening this, because rook to g1 would actually help white, but instead e2. And this is now a monster pass pawn. Uh, Fisher will not be able to reach it, because he has a dark square bishop, the pawn is on a light square, and you can only play a rook to e1, but queen e4 defends it uh, very, very easily. So like I said, if rook to e1, you can play queen to e4, then this is this is pressure. There's not, not much you can do. And if you try reaching it, for example, king g1 to try and win the pawn, then bishop c6 just again wins the game on the spot so instead fisher tried something else fisher found a way to eliminate the pawn here but he needs to give up the exchange so here fisher played a uh, rook to b5 now attacking the queen if the queen moves just rook e5 will then uh, be enough to get the job done so uh, uh, of course ullman has to capture it so bishop captures we have pawn captures on b5 and now queen captures on b5 and now finally rook to e1 fisher will win the pawn but the problem for Fisher is now Ullman has a passed A pawn. Uh, and of course, he starts uh, pushing it forward. We have rook captures on E2. Fisher finally eliminates the pawn. And now A4. We have rook captures on E6. And now A3. Uh, we have G6. Fisher also now starts pushing his passed pawn, that uh, famous G pawn. Uh, and queen to d7 now, attacking the rook and blocking the g7 square. Rook to e5, preparing to bring the rook behind the pass pawn, and of course Ullmann stops it with b6. b5 was also an option as the queen nicely guards it here, but, uh, you know, uh, why, why push it all the way when, when you don't have to? So bishop to h4, Fisher now tries to activate his bishop, but a2. We have rook to e1, you have to guard the queening square, there's no way around it. And queen to g7 now, preparing to go after the pawn. Rook to a1, and here Ullmann just captures on g6. We have queen captures on g6, uh, and it was in this position on move 42 that Bobby Fischer resigned the game. 
as there is nothing more to be done here. Once the rook, once the pawn is captured, you're gonna go queen h5, put pressure on the bishop, defend, and now let's say queen f3 check. Let's say king moves somewhere, queen captures on c3, and black has too too much uh, too much material. Just the simple push of this pawn will will be enough to create a pass pawn and win the game. So uh, that's uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. The the game I've chosen to to uh, to show. Uh, and uh, well, like I said, it, it's against Bobby Fischer, and it's a very strong Bobby Fischer. This is already 1960 Bobby Fischer, so he he already was in the 1959 candidates tournament. So this is quite an impressive victory. And uh, although uh, Simil Reshevsky and Viktor Korchny shared first place in this Buenos Aires tournament of 1960, uh, Wolfgang Ullmann, by defeating Bobby Fischer here, uh, was half a point uh, in, in front of Bobby Fischer in, in the final standings of this 1960 Buenos Aires tournament. So yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we can check out this photo one more time. Like I said, it's not from this game, but it is uh, two of them playing in the same year. So uh, let's just enjoy that for a moment. Uh, and one other thing, one final thing for this uh, video. Uh, I found uh, a very nice gif of uh, Ullman making a move. So let's just enjoy that uh, and uh, then, then be done with it, uh, with the video. Uh, so here you have it. There you go, Ullman making his move. There we go. Very nicely done. So there we go. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed that and this uh, this video. Um, wh wh what are you gonna do? That's uh, that's just how you know how life works. Uh, and yeah, uh, we can check out some uh, some other games if if you guys would enjoy that. There are some very very nice games. Uh, if you want to check out the game against Fisher from the 1970 tournament in Palma de Mallorca, I will also link that in the description below. So do check it out. Uh, and yeah, uh, I would like to thank Robert Kretschmar, uh, Martin Juba, Schmidt, Thomas Schle uh, Schleicher, uh, and Steve Boyer for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage of the good stuff, checking up on your wonderful suggestions, and whatever else happens in the chess world. So thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.